Hi, and welcome. My name is Christina Seston, and you're watching The Truth About Juvenile Obesity. My guest today is Dr. Kim, and Dr. Kim has been a regular guest with me on this series of shows. Welcome, Dr. Kim. Thanks for being here with me today. Dr. Kim is a PhD from MIT, and as I mentioned, we're here to talk about juvenile obesity. So let's start by looking at some statistics. Right off the bat, we know that there's been a 200% increase in obesity in the last 25 years. We know that the U.S. Surgeon General is currently referring to obesity as a national epidemic. 61% of Americans are obese, and of that 61%, 25% are children, and that's why we're here today. Dr. Kim, what are the consequences of something like this? At first, our children already begin to show the symptoms of chronic degenerative diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, arteriosclerosis. They used to be old age diseases, but these days children already begin to show these symptoms. So children are having old people diseases right And now. then as they grow older, these symptoms become more and more serious. So it's almost like life is being taken away from them prematurely. That's correct. Yeah. So that's a physical consequence. Are there, there must be other consequences to Mental this. consequences. Yeah. Low self-esteem. Absolutely. And then they are being bullied. Right. And they are likely to become bullies themselves. Well, if you think about it, I mean, if you're a child and at an early age you mm -hmm. determine that, mm -hmm. you know, living in this thin, obsessed culture that mm -hmm. we do, that you don't fit the norm, mm -hmm. you know it, your classmates know mm -hmm. it, so you're going to be a target. Mm -hmm. And so is there, is there a correlation with being bullied and then turning around and bullying definitely, other students? Definitely. Yeah. And a discrimination. Yeah, of course. And then this mental uh, trauma, right. it remains for the rest of their lives. Impacts us forever and ever. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Kim, we've heard the term overweight. We've heard the term obese. What's the difference? Overweight is your health is being impaired right. uh, by too much weight. But obesity means your life uh, being cut short. So more serious. Yes. More serious. Yeah. And so when we, when we take into account all of these consequences, which are far-reaching, their children are being impacted by old age diseases, mm -hmm. I mean, the emotional trauma, mm -hmm. the discrimination, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it begs the question, what's, what's leading to this, this obesity? You mean uh, the causes? What of, are the yeah. causes? There are many, but let's start one by one. Yes. Uh, I'd like to mention two uh, food ingredients. Uh, one is high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Okay. Even though the name is fructose, it has nothing to do with fruit. So, the, okay, so we will see fructose on the ingredient labels? Oh, yeah, you will see uh, that name in ingredient list right. very often. Okay. Yeah. So this high fructose corn syrup right. has been used uh, since 1971. So not that long, mm -hmm. relatively yeah, speaking. Yeah, and then it uh, is the cause of insulin resistance that leads to diabetes, obesity, hypertension, arteriosclerosis. Right, right. And then food industry began to use fructose so much and then for commercial reasons at first. They More economical, there's greater savings. Some, yeah, there are longer shelf life. Right, okay. And then the better taste. Right. Basically, they could cut the cost by 20% for some soft drink companies like Pepsi and Coke. Coke and Pepsi, yeah. right, that's so significant. So for commercial reasons, right. they began to use a lot of corn syrup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the other thing I'd like to mention is palm oil. Right, so another yeah. ingredient that yeah, we're yeah. going to be looking for on the ingredient list. That's correct. And palm oil, uh, it sounds so healthy it's, it's, it's from the vegetable, but right. palm oil is such a highly saturated oil. Mm. So uh, the health risk is quite obvious there. Right. Why are we using palm oil now? The shelf life is longer, mm -hmm. and then food looks better, mm -hmm. and then mouthfeel, which is the lingering taste after you take it. How we that, experience it as we're correct. actually eating it, yeah. right? So for these commercial reasons, they use a lot of palm oils. Right. So mm. overall, what you're saying, we need to be more conscious when mm. we're in the grocery store, looking That's at correct. the ingredient list. So we're yeah. looking for fructose, mm -hmm. or we're looking for palm oil. Mm -hmm. And these are things to avoid from yeah, what uh, you're uh, saying, yeah. if well, possible. Yeah, Is uh, it possible? <laughs> it's, it's getting more and more difficult, yeah. but it's possible. So you mentioned causes, plural. Oh, yeah. What are some for other example, causes are, of juvenile obesity? Yeah. For example, the economic and social reasons, mm -hmm. industry-wise, the food companies, they became too big. In order for them to survive, they should make us eat even when we are not hungry. 
So they did all kinds of things. So so-called food scientists, they invented something called appetite-inducing food additives, hunger-inducing. Something food to make me hungrier. Yeah, even though you are not really hungry, and also they played with a lot of this uh, psychological tricks, such as uh, you must have seen the documentary called the Super Size. Maybe yes, seen it? yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. So they just tested so many techniques. So by Increasing the size of one portion, actually, they could raise the revenue without really increasing the cost. This so it sounds morally unscrupulous. Uh, yeah. So as a consequence, one portion has 300 percent calories than they used to have. Of course. So my Big Mac and fries and soft drink. That's correct. Are giving me a lot more caloric intake than they would have five years, ten years ago. So that's is correct. That what you're saying? That's correct. This is spooky. So you're telling me there's things in my food that I'm eating that are going to increase the amount. A food I eat, it's going to increase my hunger. Yeah, that's correct. And then they make it very salty mm -hmm. to make you crave for the sweet soft drink. Right, and, and we've talked about this before, the combination between yeah, salt and yeah. sugar. And then this fructose soft drink right. make you hunger for this salty food. French fries. That's correct. So these food companies, in their smart scientific attempt, they made, uh, they quite successfully made us eat a lot more than we really need. And Dr. Kim, is it true that you can actually create an addiction to a particular product? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I am going to crave a Kit Kat, not a crunchy. We call it sugar blasting. Sugar hmm. blasting. What does that mean? When you eat something mm -hmm. and then that food has a high content of sugar and then at that time when you eat it, the body secretes a lot of insulin, right. and then that insulin triggers a certain circuitry mm -hmm. in our brain, mm -hmm. and the body remembers right. it, the brain remembers it, huh. and then brain uh, later on kind of crave for the exact that same specific taste. specific formulation. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's relatively easy if you make a certain food very sweet, and then that sweetness is coupled with other tastes. Actually, because of the sugar blasting, people remember other tastes too. So people crave for that. That's why these soft drink companies try very hard to make younger children drink their soft drinks. And right, they remember right. the taste forever. Right. Well, we're hearing now that they're targeting infants. Is that infants. correct? With that's the correct. advertising. Yeah. 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 So that's why there are so many pouring contracts. You know what pouring contracts are, right? Say more about it. For example, in the States, mm -hmm. The softening companies pay uh, on the average hundred thousand dollars per school, so that in the public school, right, they allow only one brand of soft drink inside so, the school. So you're telling me that my junior high school, let's mm -hmm. say, if we went back a number of years, mm -hmm. that only Coca-Cola could be served in yeah. my junior high school. And then the, because of in the exchange for hundred thousand dollars, which goes to what? To uh, school programs, yeah, because that kind you know of thing? the uh, these days our educational system goes I mean, uh, cuts everywhere. That's correct, right. and then the schools find this thing quite irresistible. Right. So we can understand that, right. but the the health consequence of this pouring co contract is something very serious. Well, what does it do to consumption? I mean, in terms of children that might not be exposed to pop, now it's in their yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a consequence, you know, mm. the on the average, uh, children drink. 50 gallons of soft drink a year. <laughs> and then one statistic says that if you drink one pop, mm -hmm. one soft drink mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. the chance of getting diabetes goes up by 61%. Good grief. So anybody that would hear that statistic, you think they would just, that would be it, no more, no more pop. But easier said than done. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious, we've talked about pop in school, mm -hmm. but for even younger children, mm -hmm. I mean, they drink juice. Is high fructose corn syrup an ingredient in juice please, that children yeah. will be having potentially? Yeah. Please have a look at the ingredients. Take a look at the ingredients. Yeah. Even though it looks so natural, right. but many juice, mm. fruit juice, mm -hmm. they add a lot of fructose. Right. Because I hear kids, that's what they ask for. I want mm -hmm. some juice. Mm -hmm. I want some juice. Mm -hmm. So they're potentially being exposed at these ages mm -hmm. of where they're holding little mm -hmm. sippy cups, mm -hmm. toddlers. Mm -hmm and they're starting to already get this addiction to the sugar at a so very, very early age. addiction or customer loyalty. Customer loyalty, that's <laughs> diplomatic. Yeah. It starts a lot earlier than you think. It starts with baby formula. 
Wow. Okay, let's yeah. talk about baby formula. Yeah. Please look at the ingredients of baby formula. Mm -hmm. What am I going to see? Fructose. High fructose corn syrup. Yeah. So, baby formula, I believe, is one of the deep, less discussed root cause of this juvenile obesity and adult obesity too. So, I, I just want to cut you off for a yeah. second because formula versus breastfeeding has been a raging debate yeah. for the last little yeah. while. We're seeing 50% on this side are saying, you know, you're not getting what you need through breast milk, you have to supplement with yeah. formula. 50% are saying, are you kidding? Breast milk has everything in it. What's your opinion? I'm definitely in favor of uh, breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, formula has serious, serious problems. At first, it does this exactly what we call sugar blasting. Right. So To an infant now. To an infant. This and is then incredible. their brain is the most vulnerable at the time. Right. And then within 10 days of their birth, mm -hmm. if you blast children's brain with this formula, mm -hmm. the brain starts the program of this high content of sugar taste. Right, right. requirement, craving. Yeah. And then some people quite convincingly argue that people's sense of hunger, mm -hmm. people's eating habit, mm -hmm. their hunger control mechanism, they're all confused for the rest of their life. Which leads to them potentially having a problem with weight for yeah, the remainder of yeah. their life. Also, another wow, that's one, incredible. Yeah, another thing is it is uh, virtually impossible to overfeed a, a, a baby when breastfeeding. Hmm. But there's no exception that baby formula feeding always leads to an overfeeding. Overfeeding. So, at an early age of a person's life, mm -hmm. their sense of what is full right. or what is hungry right. is, is, is totally it's confused. It's all skewed. Yeah. Another thing which troubles me most is these companies that produce baby formula, mm -hmm. they did so many ungentlemanlike uh, things to really push this consumption of baby formula. For example... So you're talking about the promotion of it? Yeah. For example, they spread rumors that breastfeeding is not really helpful to maintain the body shape of mothers, which is totally not true. Which is going to hit them where it hurts because we've already talked about how we live in a thin culture. Yeah. So if a woman's struggling with her weight after a yeah. child anyway, she's and, probably going to be susceptible in, to that in, information. Yeah, in Africa and then among the Afro-Americans in the States, mm -hmm. they kind of spread rumors that breastfeeding leads to higher incidence of AIDS mm. in children. That's incredible. Yeah. And then they tried so many times, very hard that they, want, they wanted to prove that breastfeeding leads to higher incidence of breast cancer, but they failed. So they couldn't prove that. So, but they, you know, they did so many, uh, this kind of promotional things. Right, and you're being incredibly diplomatic, calling it ungentlemanlike <laughs> conduct. Yeah. Probably so, some harsher words yeah, flying so, around than that. These food yeah. ingredients, these appetite inducement, uh, addiction. Attacks on children starts really, really early. Within a couple of hours of their birth, this industrial attack on children... They're already plugged in, <laughs> yeah. plugged into the grid. Yeah. Wow. Every year, 40,000 TV advertisements on food. Mm. Children are exposed to 40,000 times of advertisement on candies, soft drinks, snacks, all these kind of things. A few subliminal messages leads to changes the voting behavior. But think about what happens after 40,000 times It's incredible. Of it. Yeah. I mean, what you're painting a picture of a jungle, I, can I can't even imagine how we get through it. So, Dr. Kim, fast food must play a role here. Yeah. In most of the fast food chains, in order to take care of these extra calories they're taking, they have to run four hours. But Who <laughs> runs four hours, Dr. Kim? Uh, so, you know, the, uh, this accumulation of extra calories... Where does so it go? Yeah. Just obesity problem. Right, right. absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, Dr. Kim, we're talking a little bit about the food industry. Mm -hmm. Does the pharmaceutical industry play a role here as well? Uh, they, so far, mm -hmm. quite fortunately, they didn't play too big a role. Mm -hmm. But they are planning. They, they already see this thing as a huge market. So How so? How do they imagine that they can make some money off this as well? For example, they make obesity a disease. They started uh, their public campaign. Classify like, it as a disease is yeah, what you're saying? Yeah. What it means, it sounds so benign. Right. Oh, this is such a serious problem, so we should treat it as a disease. Mm. But what it means is right. only doctors can talk about it, only pharmaceutical drugs can be used. 
So I understand they now. Want, they want to make it their own market, right, excluding right. all other so-called competitors. So calling it a disease is going to eliminate a lot of other people from being able to support and encourage people out of obesity. It's now going to be having to be handled by pharmaceutical drugs in a medical environment. Once it is classified as a disease, mm -hmm. you and I talk about like this becomes right. illegal. Is that right? Yeah. So we better talk fast then. <laughs> <laughs> so what about uh, growth hormones? You know, uh, this cattle industry, mm -hmm. since 1950s, they use a lot of growth hormones. Right. For example, in Korea, the cows, compared with the same cows 50 years right. ago, they are twice as big as before. This would be comical if it weren't so scary. And problem is we eat those meat. Right. And then what happens to us? Children grow a lot faster mm -hmm. than they should grow naturally. Not only in stitcher, right. but weight twice. Right. They grow a lot faster. Right. Other symptoms like early puberty. These days we hear the news of even five year old girls oh, begin to have menstruation. Incredible. Because of this stimulated growth and then bombard this huge amount of growth hormones, they are basically meant for cows. And children take this growth hormone with the meat. So, Dr. Kim, do parents know this? I'm glad that more and more parents begin to know about this. Who would feed their children this meat that has growth hormones in it if they truly knew what it was doing? Would this not put an end to this beef industry as so we that, know it, if, that, if people knew about this? Yeah, that's why I am hopeful that only if we spread this news, mm. we can make a big difference. You know, like the Bible say, who in the right mind will give their children bad things? Right. So only if we know, we can make changes. Right, right. So, Dr. Kim, let's take a brief break here. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the causes of obesity. Thanks for being with me. Yeah.